Caution. Work in the ventilated area and wear a mask while working with Gundam marker airbrush. The fumes are often toxic and may cause health hazards. Hello everyone, I'm Aero. Today I would like to demonstrate how to use Gundam marker airbrush to paint your plastic models. But before we go in, I would like to do a small lecture to guide you through this demonstration. So let the class begin. Lesson 1. Gundam marker airbrush. This is the Gundam marker airbrush, which I will refer to as a gun throughout this demonstration. This is the trigger where if you press on it, then it will release the air through the nozzle provided into the gun. The gun has a holder for a single Gundam marker. You will prepare a Gundam marker, remove the cap, and insert it through the holder. For the air to successfully blow out and spray the paint from the marker, you adjust the tip so that it is vertically aligned to the nozzle and adjust the position by imagining the tip touching a line from the nozzle. Lesson 2. Getting air. To provide the air into the gun, I'll be using an aerosol can. First, attach the hose to the gun. Make sure to attach it tightly. For the other end, first unscrew the air valve to the point you can take it off. Then you attach the other end to the aerosol can. At this stage, even if I press the trigger, the air won't blow out from the gun. To get some air, I screw in the air valve and twist it until I feel some resistance while twisting and test to see if an air will come out. If not, then I twist a little more, but this time until I could hear a subtle release of air like pss. Then I test it again. As you can see, when I press the trigger, the air is coming out nicely. Lesson 3. Spraying paint. In order to spray the paint from Gundam marker, first shake the marker thoroughly. Remove the cap, but you see that there's no paint yet. To get the marker to drip paint, I prepare a small plate and squish the tip onto it. I repeatedly squish the tip until paint starts coming out. However, for airbrushing markers, I want the marker to drip more paint, so I squeeze it even more almost to the point that paint starts to pull at the tip. Then I insert the marker into the holder, adjust the position taught in lesson 1, and test to see if any paint comes out when I press the trigger. You see that the paint is sprayed on nicely. However, with Gundam marker airbrush system, there is one thing you have to keep in mind. First, look at this. Although I pressed the trigger, as you can see the paint did not come out consistently. There's two reasons to this that I know of where, one, the paint flow from the marker is low, so you have to squish the tip again to improve the paint flow. Two, for how much air is blowing out, the marker doesn't provide enough paint to be sprayed. Either way, when working with Gundam marker airbrush, you would want to blow out the paint in a short burst to get a consistent result. Lesson 4. Tidying up. Once you're done with your project, then you would want to maintain and store away the system for future projects. First, remove the marker from the holder and put the cap back on. Then, unscrew the air valve first, but gently and slowly until a rush of air pops out the valve. And you can see, it startled me quite well, so be aware when you do unscrew. After removing the air valve, you can then safely unscrew the part attached to the aerosol can without worrying about a rush of air dry freezing your fingers. You can also unscrew the hose from the gun, but it's optional so you can leave it alone. With that, the equipment is ready for future projects. That was all for the lecture, and the lessons will be referenced throughout this demonstration. If you just wanted to know how to work with the system, then you can end the video here. Thank you for watching! But if you'd like to see how I painted the shield, then stick around and I'll begin the demonstration. So without further ado, let's get to it! For today's demonstration, I'll be using Gundam Marker Airbrush to paint this shield. I used Gundam Marker White to base coat the shield in white. I sprayed the paint in short bursts. When the paint thoroughly covered the shield, I let it dry thoroughly. After maybe an hour, the paint dried thoroughly and as you can see, it gave a very nice paint job. However, I go further to paint the red and yellow detail. In order to do this, I prepare masking tape, take out a few strips, and tape them onto a cutting mat. Using a razor blade, I cut them into tiny bits which in this case I cut them into small rectangles and squares. With the masking tape prepared, I start masking the area where I don't want the next color to show. Because the masking tape was cut into various sizes and shapes, it was much easier to mask certain areas such as the corners of the shield. 
With the masking all done, I then prepared to paint the next color. Using Gundam Marker Red, I painted the red details. One thing to note with Gundam markers is that they do not work well with other paints, even their own or acrylic. Therefore, when you apply another layer, it won't ruin the paint job, but provide a slight rough texture to the surface. However, you can consider this to be a minor problem and still get a nice coverage. Once I let the red paint thoroughly dry, I masked the shield even more to paint the yellow detail, and used Gundam Marker Yellow to paint the cross. Once I was done with painting, I let the paint dry thoroughly. With the paint thoroughly dried, I peeled off the masking tape very gently and carefully as to not scratch or damage the paint job. Then, I used Gundam Panel Line Marker Brush Type to paint the panel details and cleaned up any mistake by rubbing it off. That is all for this demonstration. What you saw in this demonstration can be used for any models you have in your collection. However, with Gundam Airbrush Marker, I do recommend just painting one color to a part. If you're okay with slight rough texture on the surface, then this setup is very cheap, easy to use, and highly recommended. If you found this demonstration helpful, then leave a like, and if you have some thoughts you would like to share, then leave them in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to learn from you guys how to avoid the rough texture on the surface if it is possible. This was Irio, and thank you for watching.